You create a disturbance. You frighten a young lady, a timid woman who does not know what to do for terror and perhaps will be ill. You disturb a vulnerable old man suffering from a complaint and who needs repose above everything. And all this for what? Because you imagine some nonsense which sets you running all over the neighborhood. Do you understand what a horrid person you, horrid position you are in now? I do very well, sir. I feel it. But you have not the right. Hold your tongue. What right has got to do with it? Do you understand that this may have a tragic ending? Do you understand that the old man who is fond of his wife may go out of his mind when he sees you creep out from under the bed? But no, you are incapable of causing a tragedy. When you crawl out, I expect everyone who looks at you will laugh. I should like to see you in that in the light. You must look very funny. And you, you must be funny too. In that case, I should like to have a good look at you too. I dare say you would. You must carry the stamp of immortality, immorality, young man. Ah, you were talking about morals. How do you know why I'm here? I am here by mistake. I made a mistake in the story. And the deuce knows why they let me in. I suppose she must have been expecting someone, not you, of course. I hid under the bed when I heard your stupid footsteps, when I saw the lady was frightened, because it was dark. And why should I justify myself to you? You are a ridiculous, jealous old man, sir. Do you not know why I, do you know why I don't crawl out? Perhaps you imagine I am afraid to come out? No, sir, I should have come out long ago, but I stay here from compassion for you. Why, what would have you have been taken for if I were not here? You'd stand facing them like a post. You'd know you wouldn't know what to do. Why, why like that object? Why, couldn't you find anything else to compare me with, young man? Why shouldn't I know what to do? I should know what to do. Oh, my goodness. How that wretched dog keeps barking. Hush. Oh, it really is. That's because you keep jabbering. You've waked the dog. Now there, there will be trouble. The lady's dog, who until then had been sleeping on the pillow in the corner, suddenly awoke, sniffed strangers, and rushed under the bed with a loud bark. Ah, my God, what a stupid dog, whispered Ivan Androvich. It will get us into trouble. Here's another affliction. Oh, well, you are such a coward that it may be well so. A me, a me, cried the lady. Come here, you see, you see. But the dog, without heeding her, made straight for Ivan Andovich. Why is Amish Kishka keeps barking, said the old gentleman. There must be some mice or cat under there. I see, I hear, I seem to hear a sneezing. And the pussy had a cold, the pussy had a cold this morning. Lie still, whispered the young man. Don't twist about. Perhaps it will leave off. Sir, let go of my hand, sir. Why are you holding them? Hush, be quiet. But mercy on us, young man. It will bite my nose. Do you want me to lose my nose? A struggle followed, and even Androvich got his hands free. The dog broke into volleys of barking. Suddenly it ceased barking and gave a yelp. Ay! cried the lady. Monster, what are you doing? cried the young man. You will be the ruin of us both. Why are you holding it? Good heavens, he is strangling it. Let go, monster. You know nothing of the heart of women if you if you can do that. She will betray us both if you strangle the dog. But by now Ivan Androvich could hear nothing. He had succeeded in catching the dog, and in a paroxysm of self-preservation had squeezed its throat. The dog yelled and, it, and gave up the ghost. We are lost, whispered the young man. Amishkia, Amishka, cried the lady. My God, what are, you, what are they doing with my Amishkia? Amishkia, Amishkia, eek! You see, oh, monsters, barbarians, oh dear, I feel giddy. What is it? What is it? cried the old man, jumping up from his easy chair. What's going on with you, my darling? Amishka, here, Amishka, 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 cried the old gentleman, snapping his fingers and clicking with his tongue and calling Amishka from under the bed. Amishka, I see, I see. The cat not, have not have eaten him. The cat wants a thrashing, my love. He hasn't had, he hasn't had a beating for a whole month, the rogue. What do you think? I'll talk to Poroshka, I'll Poroshkova Zarevina. But my goodness, what is the matter, my love? Oh, how white you are. Oh, oh, servants, servants. The old ma gentleman ran about the room. Villains, monsters, cried the lady, sinking on the sofa. Who, 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 cried the old gentleman. There are people there, strangers under the bed. Oh, my God, Amishka, Amishka, what have they done to you? Good heavens, what people? Amishka, servants, servants, come here. Who is there? Who is there? cried the old gentleman, snatching up a candle and bending down under the bed. Who is there? 
Ivan Andrevich was lying more dead than alive besides the breathless corpse of Mishka, but the young man was watching every movement of the old gentleman. All at once the old gentleman went to the other side of the bed by the wall and bent down. In a flash the young man crept out from under the bed and took to his heels, while the husband was looking for his visitors on the other side. "'Good gracious!' exclaimed the lady, ex staring at the young man. What, "'Who are you? Why, I thought—' "'That monster's still there,' whispered the young man. "'He is guilty of Amishka's death.' "'Aye!' shrieked the lady, but the young man had already vanished from the room. "'Aye! There is someone here! Here! There is someone's boots!' cried the husband, catching Ivan Andovich by the leg. "'Murder! Murder!' cried the lady. "'Oh, a me! A me!' "'Come out! Come out!' cried the old gentleman, stamping on the carpet with both feet. "'Come out!' Who are you? Tell me who you are. Good gracious, what a queer person. Why, it's robbers. For God's sake, for God's sake, cried Ivan Andrevich, creeping out. For God's sakes, your excellency, don't call the servants. Your excellency, don't call anyone. It is quite unnecessary. You can't kick me out. I am not that sort of person. I am a, a different case. Your excellency, it has been all due to a mistake. I'll explain directly. Your excellency, exclaimed even Ivan Andrevich, sobbing and gasping. It's all my wife. That is not my wife, but somebody else's wife. I am not married. I am only... It's my comrade, a, a friend of youthful days. What? Friend of youthful days, cried the old gentleman, stamping. You are a thief. You have come to steal, and not a friend of youthful days. No, I am not a thief, Your Excellency. I am really a friend of youthful days. I have only blundered by accident. I came into the wrong place. Yes, sir, yes. I see from what place you crawled out. Your Excellency, I'm not that sort of man. You are mistaken. I tell you, you are cruelly mistaken. Your Excellency, only glance at me, look at me, and by signs and tokens you will see that I can't be a thief. Your Excellency, Your Excellency, cried Ivan Androvich, folding his hands and appeal, appealing to the young lady. You are a lady. You will understand me. It was I who killed Amishka, but it was not my fault. It was really not my fault. It was my, all my wife's fault. I am an unhappy man. I am drinking the cup of bitterness." But really, what has that to do with me that you are drinking the cup of bitterness? Perhaps it is not only a cup you drink. It seems to me that, to judge from your condition, but how did you come here, sir? cried the old gentleman, quivering with excitement, though he certainly was convinced by certain signs and tokens that Ivan Androvich could not be a thief. I ask you, how did you come here? You break in like a robber. Not a robber, your excellency. I simply came to the wrong place. I'm really not a robber. It is all because I became, I was jealous. I will tell you all about it, Your Excellency. I will confess it all frankly, as I would to my own father, for at your venerable age I might take you for a father. What do you mean by venerable age? Your Excellency, perhaps I have offended you? Of course, such a young lady, and your age. It is a pleasant sight, Your Excellency. It is really a pleasant sight, such a union, in the prime of life. But don't call the servants, for God's sakes, don't call the servants. Servants would only laugh. I'd know them. That is, I don't mean that I am only acquainted with footmen. I have a footman of my own, Your Excellency, and they are always laughing, the asses. Your Highness, I believe that I am not mistaken. I am addressing a pr I am. I believe I'm not a mistaken. I am addressing a prince. No, I'm not a prince, sir. I'm an independent gentleman. Please do not flatter me with Your Highness. How did you get here, sir? How did you get here? Your Highness, that is, Your Excellency. Excuse me, I thought that you were a Highness. I looked. I imagined... It does not, it does happen. You are so like a prince. You're so like Prince Korotokovhov that I have been, had the honor of meeting at my friend, Mr. Pyrstrev's. You see, I am acquainted with princes too. I have met princes at the houses of my friends. You cannot take me for what you take me for. I am not a thief. Your Excellency, don't call the servants. What will be good, the good of it if you call them? But how do you come here? cried the lady. Who are you? Yes, who are you? The husband chimed in, and my love, I thought it was pussy under the bed, sneezing, and it was he. Ah, you vagabond, who are you? Tell me. And the old gentleman stamped on the carpet again. I cannot speak, Your Excellency. I am waiting till you are finished. I am enjoying your witty jokes. As regards, it is an absurd story, Your Excellency. I will tell you all about it. It can be ex all explained without more ado. That is, I mean, don't call the servants, Your Excellency. Treat me in a gentlemanly way. It means nothing that I was under the bed. I have not sacrificed my dignity by that. It is a most comical story, Your Excellency, cried Ivan Androvich, addressing the lady with a supplicant air. You, particularly, Your Excellency, will laugh. You will 
you behold upon the scene a jealous husband. You see, I abased myself. I abased myself of my own free will. I did, in kill, I did indeed kill Amish, Amishka. But, my God, I don't know what I am saying. But how? How did you get here? Under cover of night, Your Excellency. Under cover of night. I beg your pardon. Forgive me, Your Excellency. I humbly beg your pardon. I am only an injured husband, nothing more. Don't imagine, Your Excellency, that I am a lover. I am not a lover. Your wife is virtue itself. If I may venture venture so to express myself, she is pure and innocent. What? What? What did you have to what did you have the audacity to say? cried the old gentleman, stamping his foot again. Are you out of your mind or not? How dare you talk about my wife? He is a villain, a murderer who's killed Amishka, wailed the lady, dissolving into tears. And then he dares... Your Excellency, Your Excellency, I spoke foolishly, cried Ivan Androvich in a fluster. I was talking foolishly. That was all. Think of me out of my mind. For goodness sakes, think of me as out of my mind. I assure you that you will be doing me the greatest favor. I would offer you my hand, but I do not venture to... I was not alone. I was an uncle. I mean to say that you cannot take me for the lover. Goodness, I have put my foot in it again. Do not be offended, Your Excellency, cried Ivan Androvich to the lady. You are a lady. You understand what love is. It is a delicate feeling. But what am I saying? I am talking nonsense again. That is, I mean to say that I am an old man. That is, a middle-aged man, not an old man. But I cannot be your lover. That a, lo that a lover is a Richardson. That is, a lovelace. I'm talking nonsense, but you will see, Your Excellency, that I'm a well-educated man and know something of literature. You are laughing, Your Excellency. I am delighted, delighted that I have provoked your mirth, Your Excellency. Oh, how delighted I am that I have provoked your mirth. My goodness, what a funny man, cried the lady, exploding with laughter.